Welcome to the 2023 final presentation of the livestock units of the student managed farm powered by New Holland. I am Rebecca DeYoung and I will be the leader of the dairy unit in the 2023-2024 academic year. Here at Lakeland College, we acknowledge that the land we gather on is the traditional homeland, hunting, and ceremonial gathering places of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. The Plains Cree, Woodland Cree, Salto, Blackfoot, Métis, Denny, and Nakota Sioux people have practiced their culture and languages on Treaty 6 and Métis Region 2 territories for generations and were the original caretakers of this land. Many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people call this land home today and have done so for millennia. We would like to acknowledge the history that we have created together on this land and to be thankful for the opportunity to walk together side by side in friendship, learning from our past and promoting positive relationships for the past, present and future. There are a few people in the audience that I would like to introduce at this time. Brett Fisher, Lakeland College Board of Governors, Tracy Quinton, Interim Dean Agricultural Sciences and Brianna Bellwood, Chair of Agricultural Sciences. 
There are also a number of industry representatives who have joined us in the theater and online today. Welcome. We appreciate your support, not only today, but throughout the year. Welcome to friends and family who have joined us online. Hello, I'm Allison Hampton and have the honor of being the 2023-2024 Equine Unit Leader. A few housekeeping details. Washrooms are out the door to my left and to my right, along the hall and out the doors on my right and go down the hall. Jeez. Please turn off your phones and put them on silent so you don't interrupt the presentations. In a case of emergency, there are emergency exits both at the top and bottom of the stairs and the muster point acro is across from College Drive in the north parking in the parking lot north of the alumni hall. There will be time for questions and after each presentation, in, in the interest of time, we limit questions to three per unit. If you have more questions, please feel free to ask the questions of the students during the intermission or after the presentations. We are monitoring the YouTube stream, and if you are watching online and have questions, post them in the chat. We will, be, we will start the presentations today with a report from the Roundup Committee. committee. Hello, I'm Ty Mitchell, I'm from Wessock, Alberta, and I'm this year's Roundup Committee Chair, and we would like to welcome everyone to our final Roundup presentation. Looking back on our sale, we would like to reflect that we are extremely appreciative of all those that attended and our buyers for bidding on animals and taking these animals home. We would also like to reflect that there was an extreme amount of people in the audience and we are appreciative of that and hope that there we hope that we can continue this for years to come we would also like to know that there was trouble from our audience and respected bidders and buyers that there was trouble logging into dlms for the first lot of the sale but most had it figured out for the remainder of the sale with the help of our dlms representative My name is Avi Lacusta, and I'm this year's Roundup coordinator on the commercial team. Uh, throughout this second semester, we uh, tried to increase sales awareness for the Roundup sale. To increase sales awareness, we utilize postcards and posters with our QR codes on them, and we task students from each unit to post them up around the likes of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Along with this, we also updated our mailing list of past buyers and people in interest. Uh, we felt like this really increased our sales awareness. Finally, we also used our QR codes at the Canadian Western Exhibition. Hi, I'm Carter Wood, the Roundup Coordinator from the Purebred Unit this year. This year, we set some short-term goals for our unit, such as creating an Instagram page and a Facebook event for the sale. We decided to change course with the Instagram page and use our unit's Instagram pages more instead. We went ahead with the Facebook event and thought that garnered a lot of attention for the sale. Another short-term goal we set at the start of the year was to hold an open house at Little Royal Weekend. We thought that worked out really good as a lot of people came through to look at the sale offering. Hi, my name is Jordan Elgersma. I'm from Barhead, Alberta. I'm part of the equine unit. Our committee decided to increase sale awareness by hanging out banners at Agribition and Little Royal. We did not have enough time to create an Instagram proposal, so we used pre-existing Facebook unit accounts to market our animals. We used Northern Horse and Wildfire Classified to further expose our sale, and we also recommend this to next year's team and find more publications. For Little Royal, we all unit members attended the Roundup booth that we set up to help answer any questions people had. Also, the equine unit had their geldings stalled inside during the event, and purebred and commercial had their cattle penned outside for clear and easy visibility for the public.
this year for inventory of livestock sold, it included eight AQHA geldings, 13 Angus bulls, four Angus heifers, and two pens of five commercial replacement heifers. Hi, I'm Will Bradford. I'm one of this year's purebred Roundup coordinators. So for the 2023 Roundup sale, the sale grossed a total of $194,220. A por the biggest portion going to the equine team, who averaged or grossed $88,900. The purebred team then grossed another 82195 with the commercial team grossing just over $23,000. For our budget this year and our total expenses to put on the Roundup sale, we had categorized it from the advertising, catalogs, buyer's gift, the auctioneer, deal mass before the sale, which include the picturing and the video of all the cattle and horses, along with, the, along with sale day, which included the internet bidding that was hosted at the Roundup sale. So the, for the total expenses to put on the 2023 Roundup sale to, came to a total of $21,290.10. We budgeted next year's sale for the 2024 Roundup sale. We put another 2.5% on all the categories that, that, I just, that I just mentioned before to put the total budget for the 2024 Roundup sale at roughly around $21,750. Some of our recommendations for next year are to continue with the same sale day format as we really liked having all the geldings together at the start and then all the cattle together at the end. We'd also like to recommend to next year's team to continue to use the same auctioneer, Casey Laws, as we really liked the professional job he did. And one thing we'd like to change is we'd like to be a little bit more prepared for with our student ringmen and kids that have to go up and talk on the block as pedigree speakers or for the bulls. We'd also like to increase the volume of the sound system during the sale, as it was a little bit quiet. We'd like to say a sincere thank you to everyone who expressed interest in any one of the three programs or bought anything at the 2023 Roundup sale. We would like to thank New Holland Agriculture, Tracy Quinton, SMF Advisors, Denise Martin, Farm Team, and buyers and sponsors for their continued support, and we would now like to open the floor for any questions. Oh, yeah. So the question was, as a committee, where do we get the money for all of the advertising? I can answer this. Um, as a unit, we do separate advertising. So equine and purebred and commercial will do their own advertising. But some of the advertising comes together where we create a banner. So such as uh, Wildfire Classifieds, we created a banner with horses, purebred, and commercial animals as itself. And then we split the cost as divided by three to pay for it. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. So the question was, is it was our most successful sale to date and the factors that contributed to it as why um, I'll pass this on to Will Bradford, our purebred representative. So I think there was a lot of factors that came together to make it a really good day that Saturday. The weather went, worked really good for us, and I think it's always important to have good weather on a sale day. People want to come. I think we were fortunate enough. We had a lot of action online, which also was really good. And at the same time, you know, we, we had fortunate that we had a lot of people come to the sale. Um, it's, you know, it's always easier to sell cattle land horses when there's an, when there's an atmosphere within the sale ring and there was people there and it turned out, you know, the calf markets are good. So the bulls sold really well along with the females. And I would say the horses had an exceptional sale too. So as a whole, we thought it was one of the most successful sales and we were really, really happy with how it turned out. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Well, we thank you for joining us for our final roundup presentation.
I would like to thank the Roundup Committee and congratulations on a successful sale. I'm Brooklyn Headley and I have the honor of being the 2023-24 Purebred Unit Leader. I would now like to call up the Purebred Team. Hello and welcome to our final presentations for the Purebred Unit. My name is Gabrielle Chemershinsky, I'm from Vagerville, Alberta, and I am this year's General Manager, and this is my amazing team behind me. This year, our team consists of 13 members, ranging from BC to Ontario. Our herd vision is to create functional, high-quality cattle that suit the needs of both purebred and commercial breeders, while advancing the student learning and management skills. Last year's team left us for some for recommendations to help us out this year. These recommendations were to create cost-effective rations, which we did until earlier this year when there was a feed shortage, communication, which we've done through teams, to sell our frozen genetics in the 2023 Roundup sale, which we decided against as we felt these genetics had more value in our sale, to create a strong bond early in the year, and continue to improve the genetic diversity within the herd, which we are doing through our AI program. This year, our team came up with some goals for ourselves to help us make sure that we were accountable. These goals included for short term, to have a strong team dynamic, which we did through team bonding, to have short and efficient meetings, which we kept them all under an hour, and to strive to prove an, improve our open rate to get back within industry standards. Unfortunately, we do not know if we've committed, completed this goal yet, as they are still AIing our cattle at this moment. For long term goals, we want to strive to improve our open rate to get back within to improve the genetic diversity of the herd, which we have done. And we also want to represent the Lakeland brand by creating a better representation when we're out in shows and sales, which we have been doing. After this, we came up with some recommendations for next year's team. These recommendations include communication, have a strong bond early in the year, create a task calendar in September so everyone knows what's going on and what's to be expected of them, to continue to use the AI program and genetically diversifying the herd. To do grooming and showmanship demos so everyone knows how to groom and show before going to fall shows. And to create cost-effective rations. After this, we went into our SWOT analysis. For internal, we have our strengths. We are a diversified team with members coming from different backgrounds. This allows us to have many different opinions to make sure we get the jobs done quickly and efficiently. We have a strong work ethic within our team, which allows us to get tasks complete effectively. We are hands-on with our cattle, and we feel our unit size of 13 allows us to accomplish things quickly and efficiently. For weaknesses, we have scheduling challenges as there's limited resources within the college, conception rates, and time restraints, as we are trying to balance our personal, professional, and SMF lives. For SWAT, for external, we have our opportunities, which include our AI program, semen and embryo donations, which allow us to genetically diversify the herd and bring in new bloodlines into our program. As well as we have attending cattle shows, which allow us to not only market our cattle, but as well as ourselves. And we have an in-person and online sale, which we feel allows us to bring buyers in from across Canada and into the States. For threats, we have that we're still currently in a feed shortage. We have public perception, disease within our calves, and competition within the Angus breed. Hi, I'm Annalise Valstar, and I'm from Springside, Saskatchewan, and I'm one of this year's genetic coordinators. To start off, we'll be talking about our gold analysis. Our weaning weight for our bull calves was 747 pounds, and our weaning weight for our heifer calves was 678 pounds. Our death, our open rate this year was a bit higher as one of our bulls was lame over the summer. Our death, our open rate was 16%, which is seven open females. We had 37 bred cows and five bred heifers. 
Our length of calving season was 62 days as we started calving on January 9th and ended calving on March 12th, 2023. Our death loss this year was 14% as we had two sets of twin found um, deceased as they were both born stillborn. We also ended up euthanizing one calf as he had chronic pneumonia and after multiple treatments, we felt it was a welfare call. We also found one other calf deceased. Hello, my name is Lexis Brisky. I'm from Westlock, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's records coordinators. As records coordinators, we keep the herd's inventory. This year, Purebred is made up of a total of 39 cow-calf pairs with one dry cow, 12 replacement heifers, and seven embryo calves that we value at $231,700. Also, as records coordinators, we work on the calving inputs on herd tracks. This year, we decided to work with the first years, which we believe to be both beneficial to us and them for learning experiences. The first years were in charge of inputting the calf's birth date, their birth weight, as well as their tag number and their tag color, and for pure pit, that would be green. Hi, my name is Riley Martin. I'm from Cornac, Saskatchewan, and I'm also one of this year's record coordinators. This year for registration, we registered all the 2023 born calves. We registered them through the Canadian Angus Association, and we do not register the embryo transfer calves, as next year's team will do that in the fall when they pull hair for DNA. My name is Bailey Richardson. I'm one of this year's health and treatments coordinators, and I'm from Eureek River, Alberta. This year, we semen tested bulls on two different days due to a handful of bulls being deferred. We called four bulls, three due to too small strotal size, and one who was underperforming all year, and the semen test made the call to call him. We palpated heifers as a selection tool and vaccinated them with Cattlemaster FP5. We vaccinated our calves with Bovie Shield Gold One Shot to prevent BRD and BVD types 1 and 2, as well as Ultrabac 7 to prevent clostridial diseases. We vaccinated our cows with Cattlemaster FP5 as a pre-breeding vaccine to prevent BRD, BVD types 1 and 2, parainfluenza, IBR, and abortion. Hi, my name is Novali Pender. I'm from Cypress County, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's health and treatments coordinators. This year we vac this year we treated 13 calves with navel infections, five with pneumonia, three with scours, and two with other, other including lameness and abscess. Due to high number of navel infections, we implemented due to high number of navel infections, we talked to our vet and changed protocol. We quit iodining at birth and found significant benefits to this. We also implemented a health and treatments box as seen on the screen to assist us in our daily health checks. This year, we also got to work alongside Janet Noasad and her team on the neonatal trial, where we pulled blood from the cows and calves and tested our vitamins A, D, E, B12, iron, and selenium. We tested a product called Vita First. This product will hopefully improve overall navel health, immunity, and reduce need for antibiotics later in life. My name is Kylie Magachu. I'm from Belgrade, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Rain and Forage Coordinator. This year, our grazing plan is a little different than most years, as we decided to utilize our new opportunity and graze Dixon's pastures to prevent fire hazards and reduce tree expansions. This will allow us to give LCP 21 a rest to rejuvenate. Our grazing budget for 2023 is $8,145. I am also one of this year's show team coordinators. This year, our team decided to attend several shows, such as Lloyd Minister's Stockade Roundup, Canadian Western Egg Ambition, and Stettler Boat Congress. We all gained a ton of new experiences, met some amazing people within the industry, and did a ton of marketing. My name is Victoria White. I am from Armstrong, BC, and I'm also one of this year's show coordinators. This year, we set aside just over $5,600 for the three shows that we attended. We did go over budget by $139.73 as a result to commuting all the way to Agribition in Regina and Stettler Bowl Congress, where we had to spend more on hotels and fuel. I am also one of this year's nutrition coordinators, and in January we went to the Stettler Bowl Congress. We took a bull and a heifer. Leading up to the show, we fed them a TMR ration, which you will see later on in the slides. And then once we got to Settler, we fed them silage topped with barley and bee pulp. 
I am also one of this year's nutrition coordinators for our sterile ration, the previous ration that we showed you guys at uh, mid-years. They were getting fed around 31 and a half pounds per head per day. This ration costed us $1.79 per head per day, and their average daily gain was 2.59 pounds per head per day. The ration that they were previously on right before the Roundup sale consisted of 60 pounds per head per day. This ration costed us $3.75 per head per day, and their average daily gain was 3.3 pounds per head per day. This ration costed us significantly more as there was more silage in the ration. For our replacement heifer ration, the ration that we previously showed you guys at mid-years, they were getting fed 22 and a half pounds per head per day. This ration costed us $1.21 per head per day, and their average daily gain was 1.73 pounds per head per day. The ration that they were previously on right before breeding season consisted of around 31 pounds per head per day. This ration costed us $3.69 per head per day, and their average daily gain was 1.14 pounds per head per day. This ration only consists of hay and grain, as we were at risk of a silage shortage and had to make changes to the rations accordingly. They were getting fed two bales um, every five days, and please refer to page five in the booklet for more information on the feed shortage. I am also this year's mixed farm coordinator. This year, one of our projects that we started along with mapping our fields was new signage for each of our pasture and croplands. They will have big bold letters in yellow and green and be placed at each gate to the according field. Currently, they are priced out at $90 each and we are looking at sourcing them from a local company. We are very hopeful that next year's team can follow through and finish this project for us. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Lockhurst. I'm from Orangeville, Ontario, and I'm this year's public relations coordinator. For public relations, I created some goals for myself. I want to be active as possible on social media, capture a favorable image, post three times weekly, and build brand awareness. So far, our Facebook has 1.9 thousand followers with 51 new followers since September. As well, we have 19,175 page reaches with 8,860 new page visits since September. As well as since making our Instagram account, we have gained 121 followers. I currently have 82 posts on Facebook ranging from Roundup, Agribition, Top 10 Dams, and Adopt a Calf. Our most engaged post on Instagram is from when getting the animals ready for Roundup. With 46 likes and 146 accounts reached. As well as our most engaged post on Instagram is from Agribition with 107 likes, 228 reactions, 3,355 accounts reached. One thing I gladly got to participate in this year was adopt a calf. I got to go visit with St. Jerome Catholic School's grade ones and twos. We had each class adopt their own heifer and bull. The grade ones named their heifer Lily and their bull Darth Vader. And the grade twos named their heifer Karen and their bull Ginger. Please refer to page seven for our social media QR codes to like and follow our social media platforms. This year, we as a team decided to AI all of our females to meet our new, our new goal of having a genetically diverse herd. We were fortunate enough to go back to Hamil Hamilton Farms and purchase a new herd bull, J HF Global 34K. We as a team really appreciated this bull's power, muscle, as well as his calving ease, birth weight EPD, and his overall soundness. My name is Jaden Rigney. I'm from Sturgeon County, Alberta, and I am this year's genetics slash repro coordinator. We had a successful calving season with 22 calves from AI, 8 from embryo, and 14 natural. In total, we had 44 calves. Continuing on into this year, we plan to AI the majority of the herd as we believe that it'll improve our open rate and increase our genetic diversity. We plan to AI 12 replacement heifers and 30 cows in three groups of 10. We also plan to use all new AI sires, so for the new sire list, please refer to page 8 in the booklet. We also plan to expand our herd by implanting embryos this year into 15 embryo recip cows, and we plan to use the last four cows and breed them to HF Global 34K. As you look on the screen behind me, our breeding cost per cow exposed for AI is $132.55. For embryo, it is $223.85, and for natural, it is $116.91. I am also the industry contact coordinator, and on behalf of the Purebred team, we would like to thank Shaf Angus Valley, Select Sires, Canadian Sires, Borson Marketing Services, and Lazy MC Angus for their support in our genetics program and hope to continue working with them in the future.
Hi, I'm Will Bradford. I'm from Eckville, Alberta. I'm one of this year's marketing and roundup coordinators. So for call sales this year and the, and the purebred team, we had 12 open cows that we decided to go to town with, 12 cull bulls, five heifers, one steer, one herd bull, and one 2023 baby calf, which came to a total amount of call sales this year of 37 head, which totaled for an amount of $55,492. I'm Carter Wood, and I'm this year's other marketing and roundup coordinator. This year, leading up to the sale, we did a few different things to get the word out. So we redid our whole mailing list and sent out catalogs. We sent out postcards with QR codes to sign up for a catalog to everyone on our old mailing list. Uh, we put up posters around town and surrounding communities, and we also gave those posters to everyone on our team to take to their hometowns and put up. Uh, we posted a lot on Facebook in the months leading up to the sale. Uh, we phoned a lot of buyers in the weeks and the, and the night before the sale and let them know to come by. Um, we also put a newspaper ad in the Vermilion Voice. For the purebred team's high-selling animals in the Bull Division was Lot 14 OAV Slasher, Red OAV Slasher 22K, and he sold the East Light Farms at Jarvie, Alberta. A high-selling female this year was Lot 18 OAV Class E 6K, and she sold the Bar 17 Little Valley Livestock of Eckville, Alberta. For the, rat, for the averages on the purebred side this year, we had 13 Angus bulls, averaged just over $5,000. We had four Angus heifers, averaged just over $4,200. We had a total purebred sale average of just over $4,800. And our purebred team grossed $82,195 this year. For the expenses for the roundup, for the roundup sale for the purebreds portion of the sale, we had all the way from the auctioneer, lunch, advertising, printing of the catalog, mailing of the catalog, along with the total DLMS expenses. And for the so for the purebred team to put on their portion of the roundup sale came to a total of ninety four hundred and sixteen dollars and seventy nine cents, which averaged out on a per lot basis of four hundred and forty eight dollars and forty two cents. We'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who came out and supported our program and bought a bull this year. Orville Hayes, Jesse Sontag, Nalt Ranch, Highland Feeders, Stalwick Livestock, Bar Jail Farm and Ranch, Kelly Konichny, and Eastlight Farms and Feedlot. We'd also like to thank all our female buyers that came out and supported and bid in the sale. Bar 17 Little Valley Livestock, Northern Livestock Sales, Allendale Angus, and Paige McDonald. Hello my, name. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Graham Barth. I'm from Coronation, Alberta, and I'm this year's financial coordinator. Please turn to page 9 and 10 in your book list to follow along with me as I go through Purebred's finances. Behind me here, you'll see our income for the year. As we had expected, a roundup brought us the majority of our income. And to follow that, uh, we had a hard call in the fall, which brought us our second largest income from our coal bull calves. Moving on to our expenses, our feed and nutrition is our largest expense, as we had expected. It's 24% higher than it was last year. This is because our barley cost is higher and our barley silage is also higher. One more thing I'd like to point out is that our breeding expenses are $3,100 higher than it was last year. This is uh, because we decided to AI rather than purchase a second bull. Moving on to our budget comparison, our expenses are $20,000 higher than we had budgeted for. However, our income is also $20,000 than we had budgeted for, which less left us with a profit of $7,720. Moving on to our cost of production for the year. Our cost of production is 47 cents higher than it was last year. This is mainly due to our feed costs being so high. Lastly here, we have our projected uh, budget for next year's team. We have projected their profit to be $2,235. We have also included their uh, equipment rental for next year for $4,455 for more accurate um, yardage cost. One more thing I'd like to point out that we increased as well was our feed budget by $7,000. We feel that our feed next year for next year's team should be cheaper. However, we still felt it was necessary to increase it by $7,000. We would like to take some time to say thank you to people that helped us make this year possible, including New Holland Agriculture, Tracy Dean, Tracy Quinton, Dean of Agriculture, Denise Martin, Austin Partington, Kyle Hoffner, Leroy Ruleman, and everyone else that's helped to go on in to make this year possible. With that, we would like to open the floor for questions. Go ahead. Um, 
So the question was that we identified that we had a high death loss and what if we figured out what it, the cause was and then if it tied in with our high morbidity around. And for this, I'll pass it to our health and treatment coordinator, Nova. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, yeah, so there was some disease with the morbidity rate. Um, so those diseases included pneumonia um, as well as scours. Does that answer your question? Oh, yes, um, due to like diseases such as pneumonia. Any other questions? Go ahead. I got a question about your bowl reaction. So you guys switched it over to corn sale, I believe, and you were paying quite a bit more for your reaction than your weight when they go up too much. So did you guys find that profitable for you? So the question was in our bowl ration, we ended up upping them and then um, right by up for the sale and then a we didn't gain as much in our bowls, so if we found that profitable for that, I'll pass it over to our nutrition coordinator, Riley. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, so from the previous ration at mid-years to the ration that was at um, the Roundup sale, we had multiple step-up rations. Um, we also weighed our bowls every two weeks just to closely monitor their weight, um, and we also hit our target weight for our Roundup sale. So even though that average daily gain was a little bit lower, we still managed to hit our target weight, so we were overall happy with the result. Does this answer your question? Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, so the question was that with our herd of 39 cows and then with 12 call cows, that is on the high side, so why did we do this? And for that, I will pass it over to our marketing coordinator, Will. So in terms of call cells on the cows, um, you know, the, all, not all 12 cows are open. There was a portion that we also decided to get rid of just in terms of their overall quality. Uh, we, didn't, we also feel that being harder on the cows in the fall is better for your herd too. I do understand the yes, that's a high number of cows to cull out of a herd of 39, but at the same time, we're trying to keep the quality of the cow herd up. And we feel by culling those cows that don't meet the, don't meet the level of quality that we want to achieve in the herd, we felt that was a sustainable thing to do. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to sell bulls in a bull sale and having a good, strong cow herd behind them bulls makes it easier for me to market them and the next year's team also. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you to the Purebred Unit for their presentation. I would like to welcome on the Equine Unit. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Lane, I'm from Strathclear, Manitoba, and I'm this year's Equine Unit General Manager. This year, our team consists of 14 students from across Canada, including BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. 
We are a very diverse team with students who have experience in multiple areas of the horse industry. Hello, my name is Avery Schneider and I am from Walkleyburg, Manitoba and I am this year's stable manager. Currently our herd inventory consists of six broodmares which are all in full. We have not purchased any geldings for next year's colt starting team. Hello, my name is Shailene Earl. I am from Kid Scotty, Alberta and I am the secretary within the unit. Our vision is to produce, select, and train quality quarter horses with excellent disposition and confirmation in an economically sustainable format. We have created a SWOT analysis for our team this year to identify our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and our threats. One of our strengths this year was the hard work ethic of our team and how well we work together. Another was our high engagement on social media and through our marketing. We believe that this contributed to the success of our sales. Last is our increased sale price on our weanlings and our geldings. Compared to last year, we increased the sale price, average sale price of the weanlings by $550 and increased the average sale price of the geldings by just over $1,300. Our weaknesses this year are our input costs, which are higher than other producers, due to extra health requirements here at the college, as well as a high breeding cost since we do not have a stallion. Another is our conflict resolution. Although conflict was not a regular occurrence in our unit this year, when we did come across it, we struggled to solve it in a timely manner. Our high morbidity rate last fulling season, as we lost three out of our five foals due to a rare condition called hypothyroidism, is also a weakness of ours. We have a we have created and expanded our introduced connection by providing educational engagement and increasing awareness. We built a relationship with Hoffman's and Country Junction to support the SMF horses through feed rations and information for future decision makings. As well as we expanded our event management skills by hosting a three-day competition that, to the public, which was publicized by the local community. Each year, we allow a 20% chance that a horse will have to be pulled from the sale due to health or injuries. However, we sold eight sound and healthy horses, making it the first year that the unit was to achieve the goal of no scratches. With a steady market that is increasing on an annual base is beneficial. However, we are always prepared for a revenue downfall. With the risk of injury and the market downhill with revenue, we adhere to a budget that allows us to meet or exceed our break-evens to be economically sustainable. Our key performance indicators for our broodmares start off with our high conception rate for the, from this year's breeding season, which was 86%, which is higher than the industry standard of 65%. Our live foals per mare bred was 29%, due to losing three foals to hypothyroidism and two mares being open last breeding season. This inflated our cost per full raise to be just under $8,000. We hope to improve these numbers by working with a nutritionist and continuing with our feed tests. Hi, my name is Nicole Runge. I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Standard Operating Procedures Coordinator. The KPIs we chose for our geldings this year are monthly cost per horse road and horses road per hour. Our monthly cost per horse road came out to $952.71 per month as compared to industry standards of $1,200 per month. Our cost per month road is lower because we have an opportunity cost of $35 a ride where a professional charges $50 a ride. Our horse's road per hour is one horse road per every two hours as compared to industry professionals of one horse road per hour. Our horse's road per hour are lower as we are inexperienced as compared to industry professionals. Hi, my name is Jordan Algersma. I'm from Barrett, Alberta. I'm one of this year's Roundup coordinators. The training benchmarks we set for the geldings this year were achievable. However, we had a two-month recovery period on the geldings. Regardless, we accomplished those goals. In the beginning of the school year, we set various short and long-term goals for our unit. A short-term goal for all of our sale animals was to have a body condition score of 6 or 6.5 by sale time to maximize the eye appeal of each horse. We achieved this goal for all of our sale animals, aside from two sale geldings who were more severely affected by strangles and lost body condition. We were able to bring their body condition scores back up to fives. 
We successfully created a broodmare mating management plan to organize our breeding choices for the upcoming year and all sale geldings roped or tracked live cattle. Our long-term goals were to develop a proposal to the college to get power to the water bowl at LC11, which would extend our grazing season beyond freeze up. We did not achieve this goal. Another was to outline an evaluation system for our herds improvement to help with decisions regarding purchases and retention of horses. This outline has been created and is being put to use as we search for colts to buy for next year's team. Our last long-term goal was to focus more on developing long-term relationships with industry partners. We did this by returning to businesses that we have worked with in the past, as well as creating a new relationship with Hoffman's Horse Products and Country Junction Feeds. Hello, my name is Cicely Switzer. I'm from Vancouver, BC, and I'm one of this year's public relations coordinators. Last year's team recommended that we explore new marketing channels for our weanlings outside of the Roundup sale, purchase a stallion to reduce breeding costs, and create a detailed timeline to leave for future teams to reference and refer to. Hello, my name is Ainsley Zayak. I'm from Vermilion, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's public relations coordinators. This year, we decided to market the weanlings outside of the Roundup sale on Facebook. This allowed us to reach a larger audience as there was more time to bid, and we found more potential customers. Although purchasing a stud would reduce breeding costs, there were some safety concerns for students and other horses on campus, so we decided to go against this recommendation. As a team, we created a detailed timeline for next year's student managed farm team to follow. It includes dates and important information to stay on top of the heavy workload. Good afternoon, I am Michaela Postma, this year's finance coordinator. I am from Spruce View, Alberta. Income is greater than budgeted this year due to a higher average sale price per gelding in this year's roundup sale. Feed expenses increased due to the addition of a new ration and due to the increased number of geldings in this year's roundup sale, roundup sale expenses increased. Hi, I'm Ty Mitchell. I'm from West Saka, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's roundup coordinators. These are the costs associated with our sale geldings that create our break-even leading up to sale day, which is a total average of $7,321.86. The sale average for the geldings is $11,062.50. Our break-even costs are slightly higher this year due to the amount of retained horses and our geldings needing a higher energy requirement in their nutrition so we decided to upgrade their nutrition program. Income is lower than budgeted due to high morbidity and stud fees are lower than budgeted due to a rebreeding. Our, bird, our weanling break-even price this year was $7,733 per weanling. This was due to breeding seven mares last year and only getting two live foals. We did not make this break-even price as our average sale price per weanling was $200. $2,400. Despite the broodmare team having low income, there is a higher average sale price per weanling this year. The increased gelding income will offset the lower income from the broodmare team's weanling sales. Net income for the unit is $8,595, including opportunity costs. Opportunity costs totaled $11,063, which includes labor, utilities, and equipment rental. This means that the net profit for the unit is $19,568. These are the costs associated with sale day, like having catalogs available to the public, DLMS for online bidding and viewing, advertising such as boosted Facebook posts and having ads on popular websites, auctioneer and ringman, and food for our buyer's lunch. This year, the lot cost for the geldings was $857, which is higher than what we had previously budgeted in first semester of $650. The reason for this increase is due to higher unforeseen costs, such as the food, extended advertising, and shipping costs. We would like to express our gratitude to our gelding and weanling buyers and wishing them all the best of luck with their new prospects. We would like to thank Watson Cattle Co. Stankovich Ranches, Jill McCleary, Richard Hollingworth, Dean Kozak, Lori Lefebvre, Connie Kazira, Megan Dick, and Curtis Worklund. 
Currently on Facebook, we have just over 1,900 followers and a reach of 55.6 thousand people. We started an Instagram account this year to try and gain a new audience, and we have gained 367 followers. Our top post on Instagram is a reel of the Sail Gilding's Porches to Trending Music. This got just over 5,500 views and 325 likes. On Facebook, our top post was an in search of ad looking for new geldings for next year's team. This reached just over 16.6 thousand people and got 176 reactions. As recommended from last year's team, we explored new marketing channels for our weanlings. We hosted a Facebook auction which yielded higher sale prices than last year. We believe this is due to finding our target market on Facebook. To boost our engagement, we created Instagram and Facebook Reels paired with trending music. The creation of our Instagram page allowed us to reach a new audience and expand our social media presence. We will recommend to next year's team to continue to market and sell the weedlings outside of the Roundup sale. A part, of, a part of my job is taking meeting minutes to ensure the team are up to date on tasks throughout the year. Posting meeting minutes prior to the following meeting and storing the meeting minutes that is accessible by all unit members. As the stable manager, I input all of our horses' information onto Equicity, as well as I send in our livestock inventory reports. This year, this semester, I got to work with the first years, and I ran the stable management meetings and made their chore schedule, as well as I track inventory, exp track inventory and expenses for our stable supplies. We build standard operating procedures to provide future students accurate instructions for procedures within the unit. We now have 18 completed SOPs. Hi, my name is Haley Schmidt. I'm from Sunningdale, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's range of forage coordinator. We budgeted for the mare care costs at $2,220. Three broodmares would come back from the stallion's farm and be put onto pasture. The budget for them is $600. We have the opportunity to grace the broodmares at the Clendonald pasture this year. The other three broodmares will stay at the stallion's farm due to pasture availability. They'll come back to the college in the middle of September with the other broodmares. The geldings will go on to LC11. The grazing budget for them is $592.62. The total grazing budget for both the broodmares and geldings is $3,412.62, which also includes mare care costs. I'm Madeline Fraser. I'm the CEO's feed management coordinator. The broodmares are eating 38 pounds per day of 22 Cody hay and have a free choice trace mineral block, along with free choice pro stock mineral. Their total, their total ration cost was $4.07 per head per day. The weanlings were eating 22 Cody hay at 23, 23 pounds per day, and their grain ration consisted of whole oats, soybean meal, and Hoffman's mineral. Their total ration cost was $3.17 per day. We chose, this fitting, we chose to feed some of the geldings as fitting grain ration to help maintain a body condition score of 6 to 6.5 by sale day. They were eating 22 Cody hay at 21 pounds per day, and their grain ration consisted of Hoffman's Pro Fat, Hoffman's Elite, Hoffman's Mineral, Beet Pulp, and Milled Flax. Their total ration cost was $7.94 per head per day. We noticed that some of the geldings were not on track to achieve a body condition score of 6 to 6.5 by sale day, so we decided to give them some extra elite and bee pulp to help them out. They were eating 22 Cody hay at 21 pounds per day, and their grain ration consisted of Hoffman's Pro Fat, Hoffman's Elite, bee pulp, and milled flax. Their total ration cost was $8.89 per head per day. We also noticed that some of the geldings were doing very well on the grain ration we created, so we decided to lessen the grain intake that they were receiving so they didn't overindulge themselves and were a healthy body condition score of 6 to 6.5 by sale day. They were eating 22 Cody hay at 21 pounds per day, and their grain ration consisted of Hoffman's Pro Fat, Hoffman's Elite, Bee Pulp, Hoffman's Mineral, Bee Pulp, and, and Milled Flax. Their total ration cost is $6.19 per head per day. Hello, my name is Sarah Folland. I am from Coldstream, British Columbia, and I am this year's AQHA Records and Reproduction Coordinator. We have completed registration for both weanlings and transfers for all sale geldings. 
All six broodmares are heavily in foal and healthy. Here you can see our pick of stallions for the 2023 breeding season. Two mares will be bred to Circerbaugh Grey Gun, two to Andy's Little Step, and the remaining two will be bred to Obsessed with Corona and Vanilla Latte. This chart is a breakdown of all fees associated with breeding six mares to outside stallions. As you can see, Laura Tassitivio's breeding fee is lower. This is due to one remaining rebreed. Hello, I'm Emma Purvis from Cold Lake, Alberta, and I am this year's Mixed Farm Coordinator. The Mixed Farm team worked on several projects this year, one of which was mapping the land that the college owns. To date, we have been unable to accomplish this. Shortly after we began the project, the area received a heavy snowfall that made it impossible to complete the work using regular vehicles. We decided to use heavy farm equipment, or ATVs. Unfortunately, the heavy farm equipment was not compatible with the GPS systems the team was using, and the ATVs had unforeseen mechanical issues. We do still plan to complete the project before the end of the year. We were able to map fields LC11, LC4, and LC5. If we run into more difficulties, we will recommend that next year's mixed farm team start the project earlier so that weather is not an issue. The new mixed farmland purchase was not part of this year's mapping goal and will be completed at a later date. My name is Courtney Hansen. I'm from Walden, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's health coordinator. The geldings were dewormed with Quest Plus dewormer twice and equivalent gold once. The Geldings also received a Coggins test before arriving on campus, as well as booster and initial vaccines, including pinnacle intranasal for strangles, equine rhinopneumonitis, and equine encephalomyelitis. All eight Geldings had their teeth floated and feet shod before the sale. This chart shows how much was spent per Gelding. The reason for cost differentiation is due to mileage costs, strangles treatments, and some Geldings requiring certain treatments. This brought the total to $11,469.33 for all gelding health expenses. The weanlings were dewormed with Quest Plus dewormer once and the broodmares were dewormed twice. The broodmares also received a Coggins test before arriving on campus. All six broodmares were preg checked and confirmed in full. They were also vaccinated three times for pneumabort, which, pre which prevents the chance of infectious abortions. This chart shows how much was spent per broodmare. The reason for cost differentiation is due to mileage costs and some broodmares requiring certain treatments. This brought the total to $2,284.67 for all broodmare health expenses. The team learned a lot this year about how to better the unit for next year's equine SMF. To begin with, we recommend that the team continue to sell weanlings through Facebook auction, but to try a soft close auction instead. This will help prevent buyers from waiting to the last minute to bid and closing off other buyers who would bid higher. We also recommend changing the breeding program next year if it is unsuccessful. By selling any broodmare that fails to produce for a second year and buying more proven breeding mares with a better chance of producing for years to come. Finally, we would like the team to look into the benefits and drawbacks of purchasing fillies to add to our cold starting program. We have found that they tend to be less expensive than geldings from the same location and may be more cost effective for the team. We would now like to thank New Holland Agriculture, our SMF advisors, Tracy Quinton, Denise Martin, the farm team, and our faculty advisors for their continued support throughout the year. We would now like to open the floor for any questions. Yep, there's one in the top there. Uh, what kind of criteria do you guys use when selecting your stallions to breed for new breeds? So the question was, what kind of criteria do we use when selecting stallions to breed for broodmares? To answer this question, I will call on our AQHA and reproduction coordinator, Sarah Folland. So the main things we look at, look at for, um, like what we're looking for in stallions is their um, breed and registration. We only want to breed to registered um, quarter horses, as well as their confirmation and um, if they have any proven um, foals out of them previously. Does that answer your question? Yep, in the corner.
Thank you. Okay, so the question was regarding what goes into the opportunity cost for our broodmare herd. To answer this question, I'll call on our PR coordinator, Cicely Switzer. The opportunity costs are made up of what a professional would be making in the industry, but we are below professional standards. So this would be the labor costs going into taking care of them, the costs of having somebody feed them and all of that. Does that answer your question? Um, in the middle there. So the question was, is it a group decision to not purchase a stallion or was it more regarding the college? To answer this question, I will call on our stable management coordinator, Avery Schneider. So it is partially a group decision as we do have to handle the animals and we would have to handle the stud, but it also is due to the college having concerns with how many horses we have on campus and the staff. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much for your time. I would like to thank the equine unit for their presentation, and I am Harley Carlson. I have the honor of being the extensive grazing manager for the 2023-2024 year. And next, I would like to call on the extensive grazing unit. Hello and welcome to our 2022-2023 final presentation. My name is McKenna Martin. I'm from Lashburn, Saskatchewan, and I have had the honor of being the general manager for this year's extensive grazing research unit. This year, our team is made up of eight students from across Manitoba, Alberta, and Saskatchewan, and our purpose is to maintain a sustainable and economically viable extensive herd while exploring various cattle management practices. Our unit mission is to achieve the maximum amount of grazing time while remaining low, main, low maintenance and extensive in our management while continuing to build a strong maternal cow herd that contains a large amount of breed background and, and performance data. Our recommendations that we completed from last year is we did purchase a new Angus bull. We decided this year not to do our own demo. We sold, our, we sold bred heifers in a Facebook auction instead of in the roundup sale. We have our replacement heifers currently in a heifer selection trial, having RFI data gathered on them. We, any of the research we've done this year has been with the research department. Uh, we have a fall riot proposal that we completed that will be talked about later in this, in this presentation that we found for fall grazing options. Our goals for the semester were to manage our body condition score on our cows and our bred heifers throughout our bale grazing, select our replacement heifers that partake in our heifer selection trial, buy a new Angus bull for our herd, create a fall ride proposal, and retag our entire herd with engravable tags. Hello, my name is Owen Kaminko and I'm from Rossburn, Manitoba. As you can see behind me is a SWOT analysis for this year's team. And some of our strengths is we are a strong and diverse team coming from many different backgrounds in the industry, as well as our willingness to learn. Some of our weaknesses have been lack of communication and public, public exposure and communication. A few of our opportunities have been 
the donated corn seed by North Star Genetics, the RFI trial with Dr. Susan Marcus, as well as our far, fall rye grazing opportunity. A few of our threats have been feed prices and the feed shortage, as well as our bale grazing along the highway due to public perception, as well as our low corn yield on LC2, which spiked our feed costs. Hello, I'm Brant Bannerman, and I'm from Livelong, Saskatchewan. I was this year's data and records coordinator. So this year, currently, we have 55 mature cows, seven bred heifers, 12 replacement heifers, two Hereford bulls, and one black Angus bull calf. This changed from the start of the year where we had 63 mature cows, 16 heifers to be bred, 33 heifer calves, and just the two Hereford bulls. Also, we had our first calf yesterday, so now we have one calf. Um, for key performance indicators, we chose to record six, six of these. So growth of calves, we achieved 40% of the dam's weight at 205 days of age. Industry standard is 43%. Our open rate was 9%, 6% among our mature cows. Industry standard is 4%. Uh, length of calving season lasted 81 days. This is usually 63 days in industry standard. Death loss amongst our calves was 0%. Industry standard is 4%. Uh, cows assisted calving. We had 97% unassisted. We had to assist two calves because their calves were having problems sucking. We also achieved 155 days on pasture and 34 days of aftermath grazing. Hello, mine's Owen, my name is Owen Kamenko, and I'm this year's feed management and nutrition coordinator. Behind me on the screen is a bale grazing calculator I had created using Excel. This allows you to see your residue, your days on feed, as well as your prices and the amount of bales you'll need to feed. This year, our unit did 21 day feed periods, seven day feeding periods, and four days. With the 21 and 7 days, we found that the residue left over was too much. And with the 4 day, the residue was perfect, but we found competition among our cows and heifers. As for mineral this year, we had a mineral problem. Around the middle of December, our cows stopped consuming mineral. Uh, we've been in contact with Bullseye Feeds, helping us with that problem. Uh, we have tried a new mineral blend. We have pulled salt away, we have mixed salt with the mineral, we even tried a molasses lick tub. None of that had worked. We then had blood tests taken by the vet in town. Uh, we came back copper deficient. He had suggested using a chelated mineral, which is now currently in the pasture with the cows, as well as giving Vitafirst to the calves at birth. I'm Brent Bannerman, and I was also this year's mixed farm coordinator. So this year in Mixed Farm, one of our key talking points was a fall rye proposal. The reason the extensive grazing team wanted to do this was to extend our later season grazing days. We believe fall rye would be a good forage to accomplish that. So our goal with fall rye is it's going to be seeded on LC12 after the barley silage is harvested. This is going to be around late summer, early fall. This seed was purchased out of Glendon, Alberta at Egg Zone. It was purchased at a price of 40 cents a pound, and the seeding rate is going to be 120 pounds, uh, 120 pounds per acre. So that worked out to a total cost for the 20 acres that we plan on seeding to $960. Hello, my name is Christina DeVos, and I'm from Dauphin, Manitoba, and I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. This year, our total grazing budget is $22,500. We will begin our grazing season on LCP 24 with shredding bales through calving. This is our way of hopefully regenerating this pasture in the cheapest way. Next, we'll move to LCP 23. We've broken up into six paddocks using the grazer grazer to maximize our production. We will expect 10 to 12 days on each paddock. Next, we'll move to LCP 22 where we've broken it up into three paddocks where we expect 15 to 20 days per paddock. In mid-July, one of our breeding groups will go down to LCP 27 to be bred and grazed for the rest of the season. I'm Faith Pete from Oxford, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Health and Treatments Coordinator. 
This semester, we've treated one cow for lameness, and when we came back from Christmas break, we did come across a heifer with severe pink eye. We consulted the vet about it, and he told us our only options were to either remove the eye or sell her. We ended up deciding to sell her as we didn't see her fit for breeding stock anymore, and it was the best option financially. On January 12th, we preg checked our cows, which also included ivermectin everything. Our heifers also received vaccines of Bovishield Gold and Ultrabac 7 Wasami back. On March 6th, we scour guarded our bred heifers, and then on April 3rd, they got their booster, along with the cows getting their annual booster. They also both received Ultrabac 7. In July, our herd bulls will be vaccinated with Bovishield Gold, Ultrabac 7, and FusoGuard. Our processing day will be in July at some point as well, with our cows receiving Bovishield Gold and our calves receiving Bovishield Gold One Shot, Ultrabac 7, and our steer calves receiving Ralgro implants. Hello, my name is Piper Snow. I'm from Bentley, Alberta, and I'm this year's finance coordinator. This year, our steers brought in the most income at $50,277. We received a total income of $99,863, which was actually $15,000 more than we expected. Our feed costs took up the most money this year at $49,645, but with rising hay costs, um, that increased our overall expenses. So far, we well, this year we received $99,863. We spent $99,343. That gave our unit a net income of $519. Our cost to produce a pound of calf is $3.15. Our return per pound of calf is $3.44. That gave us a profit per pound of $0.29, cents, which is three cent, three cents higher than last year. For the 2023-2024 year, we budgeted $97,700 in income and $96,670 in expenses. That gives, we also budgeted a net income of $1,030. Please turn to page 29 in the booklet for a further breakdown in the budget, cost of production, and year to date. Hello, I'm also this year's marketing coordinator. This year we decided to sell our calf crop after weaning in January. For our steer calves, I took three different prices and compared them in break-even analysis to see which option would be, be the best fit for our group. We ended up selling all 31 of our steer calves to JGL Enterprises for a grand total of $50,719.86 without deduction. We also sold our 20 of our heifer calves to the commercial unit here on campus. We offered them to the commercial unit before looking for other buyers as previous teams have done before us. They said they would take them and we sold them for $23,855.66 without deduction. Hello, my name is Joshua Lehman. I'm from Rostern, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's research liaison. This year we got to work closely with the research department on campus with helping with the swath grazing trial led by Dr. Obi Daruna as well as taking part in the heifer selection trial led by Dr. Susan Marcus. The swath grazing trial was conducted over first semester ending in January of this semester and the steers were backgrounded on oats and oat and forage swath mixes and they were tested on average daily gain as well as other things which all can be found through the link in your booklet on page 29. During the heifer selection trial which is going on now we are very great, grateful that Dr. Susan Marcus has sponsored 12 of our heifers to partake in this. They have they are getting data collected on them, such as reproductive tract, soundness, RFI, average daily gain, as well as other things. There is a table of data to date in your booklet on page 30. This is not a full set of data as it is just to date results and the trial wraps up in May. So this is just to paint a trend. 
Hello, my name is Brianna Hill. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, and I'm this year's reproduction coordinator. This semester, our unit bought Allendale Showtime 60K, a yearling bull from Allendale Angus. We, we chose him because we liked his phenotype and his 85 pound birth weight. We'll be using him in our upcoming breeding season. This season, our, our unit has the two breeding groups. Our Angus group will have 30 cows and will be bred by our new yearling bull, as well as the bull rented from the commercial unit. Our Hereford group will have 45 cows and will be bred by both our three and seven year old Hereford bulls. I'm also this year's a public relations coordinator. Our most uh, popular post of the year was our online auction for our bred heifers. It reached 2,885 people and received 16 likes. We chose a Facebook auction because the, we, we, we liked the success the equine unit had with theirs. We thought it'd be a good way to promote our unit. We sold them for 1900 each and received a total of 9500 for our pen of five. Our Facebook page this year has reached 10,053 people and received 53 likes over the course of the year. Our Instagram account has reached 724 people and received 111 likes since its creation on September 26th. Hello again, I am also this year's facilities coordinator as well as risk manager. And this year for risk managing, we felt it would be important to outline that we will be ensuring the Hereford bull and the Angus bull, as without either of these, either bulls for these groups, we'd be in a very bad situation and this will help us get out of that should it come to that. We'll also, pertaining to the bulls, be semen testing all of them before breeding season to ensure they are physically able to cover all the cows we need them to. Lastly, we decided to switch from bale grazing to shredding the bales for our cow herd to decrease the competition between the older and younger cows, as Owen earlier mentioned, this giving our younger cows an opportunity to get the higher plane of nutrition that they need. Our recommendations for next year's team are to continue using engravable tags in everything that they replace, to reconsider selling the bread heifers in the Roundup sale, to buy a new Hereford bull, as well as continue working closely with the research department on campus as we felt it was a very valuable experience. I'd like to give a special thanks to Marisa Schubel, Kyle Hafner, Chris Lehman, New Holland Agriculture, Tracy Quitten, Green Vanderberg, Obi Daruna, Susan Marcus, the research department, the farm team, and to everybody else who helps us make SMF possible. I'll now open the floor for questions. So the question was, what was our total income for the entire year? And I'm going to hand this question off to our finance piper. Our total income for the year was 99860 or no. Cool. Yeah, $99,863. Does that answer your question? Okay, so the question was, are fall rye grazing ideas a great idea? What were the, all the costs associated with that that we calculated out? And I'm gonna hand that over to Brandt. Uh, yeah, great question. So the cost uh, presented in the slideshow, that is strictly seed cost. So we're going to add the machinery and labor cost to that as well, but that number is to be determined yet. And as for fertilizer, we decided we won't fertilize it because we are putting barley silage crop in beforehand and we are almost going off a double cropping idea with that fertilizer as well as we want to keep our inputs lower because our profit margin will remain higher that way. Does that answer your question? So 
So the question was, do we do feed costs to see the mineral in our feed? And if not, are we planning on doing it in the future? I'll hand this to Nutrition with Owen. Uh, so we do run feed tests on all of our hay. Um, we're actually also conducting a water test and we are presuming that there's high sulfate waters levels in the water and that that is binding to the copper in the feed and it is just passing through the cow. Does this answer your question? Thank you. Thank you, Extensive Grazing Unit. There's now a 15 minute intermission and there are cookies and beverages in the cafeteria, which is down in the hallway to the left here.
I would like to welcome everyone back to the second half of our SMF presentations. I'm Alicia Coltis, speaking on behalf of Kiefer Gittich, next year's Bison leader. I would now like to call upon to the stage the Bison unit. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bailey Ferguson, and I'm the leader of this year's Bison SMF unit in its first year of operation. Behind me is my wonderful team, and we are very excited to show you what we have accomplished so far. We will start with the mission statement that we get created this year, which is that our unit strives to sustainably raise a high-quality bison cow-calf herd, an extensive, low-stress, and healthy environment. We acknowledge the cultural significance of the bison to the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit groups. We plan to contribute data and knowledge through research and education while promoting the industry and species conservation. Hello, I'm Michael Pyra. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. This semester, our unit conducted a SWOT analysis to identify some key internal strengths and weaknesses, as well as some external opportunities and threats. Behind me, you can see them on the board. For our strengths, we have communication and decision making, as well as a variety of experience and industry interest and herd size. We believe our herd size is a strength as it is slightly larger than the industry average. For our weaknesses, we are a new SMF unit and we are still developing our foundation and we have multiple roles since we are so small. This makes workload distribution somewhat challenging. We're also still developing our budget and our advisor is part-time on campus, making communication with him somewhat difficult. For our opportunities, there are a low number of schools with bison in Canada, making Lakeland somewhat unique. We also have lots of industry support and increased meat demand for bison and increased adequacy for consumption and production of bison. For threats, it, rising inflation is leading to a rising cost of production, making it more expensive for us to raise our animals. We also share our pastures with beef animals, making biosecurity a possible challenge. There's a fluctuating market and poor public perception of bison meat as some people consider it gamey and are afraid to try it. For our short term goals, we hope to expand our network within the industry while establishing a strong foundation for next year's students, as well as preparing for a successful breeding and calving season. For our long term goals, we hope to run a successful and profitable bison operation while we continue to establish our herd goals and successfully manage and graze our pastures. We also hope to maintain or increase the size of our SNF in the coming years. Hello, I am Bryson Andres and I'm from Windthor, Saskatchewan. Some of our accomplishments this year in the SMF have been transitioning our herd onto our new land, selling calls, calves, and replacements to various buyers, working towards our herd goals by selecting replacement animals for genotype, phenotype, and production traits. We've also purchased some new breeding bulls and worked towards networking and industry by attending various events. My name is Ashley Lang and I'm from Barhead, Alberta. Some of our recommendations for next year's team are to attend the Canadian Bison Association and Bison Producers of Alberta conventions, as well as purchase more breeding bulls to replace those on lease. We also recommend that they continue to network and to keep some heifer calves back for replacements. Our key performance indicators this year have been based off of the cattle KPIs and have been modified to fit bison using numbers we have pulled from the CBA benchmarks. For our growth rate, we hope to have our heifers weighing 400 pounds at eight months and our bulls weighing in at 450 at eight months, while keeping our open rate at 10% or less when it comes time to preg check. We hope to have no new calves hit the ground any later than June 15th as bison are seasonal calvers that calve from late April till May. We also hope to maintain our death loss at 4% or less. 
Behind me on the screen, you can see how the buys unit measures up against industry average. As you can see, our growth rate is slightly higher than industry average, with our bulls coming in at 454 pounds at eight months and our heifers coming in at 434 pounds at eight months. Our open rate is slightly higher, coming in at 13.3%, and we have been unable to measure our calving season yet, as the cows have not started to calve. Our death loss is slightly higher, coming in at 5.3% over the 4% of industry average. Hi, I'm this year's data analyst for the Bison SMF. Currently, our herd inventory is sitting at 159 bred cows, 35 replacement heifers, 6 purchased bulls, 3 reserve bulls that we have our name on and have not picked up yet, and 3 donated bulls, putting our final herd inventory at 206 head. Hello, my name is Ben Schmalzbar, and I am this year's nutrition coordinator. We have fed a variety of rations throughout the year. Before the animals showed up to the college, they were fed by their caregivers at Pilatus Ranches and Bar JL Enterprises. At Bar JL Enterprises, the animals fed a barley green feed and straw-based diet, and at Pilatus Ranches, they received a silage-based diet. Um, but when the animals were to be moved to the college, we had to start thinking about transition diets. The animals at Bar JL Enterprises didn't need a uh, transition diet because they were already on a fairly similar ration to what we were going to be feeding them. That was not the case for the animals at Pilatus Ranches, however. The animals at Pilatus Ranches were transit, had their transition diet before they arrived at Pilatus Ranches so that they wouldn't, so they wouldn't go off feed or experience any health risks or welfare issues. As you can see on the board, here's a breakdown of our four different rations and also a chart from the basic, basic bison nutrition document which shows the mature cows weight throughout the year and their dry matter intake. As you can see, there's a big jump in April when they start coming out of seasonality. On the board behind me, you can see an analysis of the four different rations that we have fed since the animals arrived to campus, and also a chart that, dic that dictates the animal requirements. When the animals first came home, we fed ration one, and we did this, we mixed the rations together with a bale shredder by shredding the hay bales on the ground, putting the bar shredding the barley green feed on top and the straw on top of that. Uh, the, we switched to ration two when the heifers were brought home. We did this because the heifers have a higher protein requirement and the cows were in poor body condition. We fed straw free, free choice to help reduce our feed costs. As you can see, we have a breakdown of our, of our feed costs since the animals have arrived. We have fed a lot of barley green feed and hay comprising 44% and 43% of our uh, budget respectively. This is because they are the base of our di diets. We have not fed any 2021 Lee hay as we have been saving it for later as it is better quality and the animals have a higher plane of nutrition when they get close to calving. I'm also this year's health and wellness coordinator. This year we had a 5.3 death loss within our herd. This is due to a variety of reasons, including stress from transportation and handling, injury, and old age. Our herd was vaccinated for clostridial diseases this year using Ultrabac 7 and treated for internal parasites using injectable Ivamec. This year we had the opportunity to perform a post-mortem on one of our cows who was showing signs of chronic lameness, had sequestered herself off from the herd, and was going off feed. We were worried that there was a mycoplasma outbreak within the herd, so we conducted a post-mortem. Upon cutting her open, we found that she had a white line abscess on one of her feet that was slowly spreading up to one of her joints, putting our mycoplasma fears to rest. I am also this year's record coordinator for the Bison SMF. This semester, our unit decided to adopt a new record-keeping program known as BioTracks. We chose this program over herd tracks in Excel as the college wanted to diversify their livestock record keeping programs and Biotrax was the right fit due to ease of use and the price. Um, we are working very hard on making sure we leave great instructions for next year's team on how to use this new program. Hello, I am also this year's range and forage coordinator. This year we've made some goals for our grazing management. 
For our short-term goals, we want to buy solar water, take soil samples, control our pests and weeds, and create a new KPI for grazing days. For our long-term goals, we want to maintain or increase the productivity of our pasture, increase pot diversity, follow the four principles of grazing management, and follow the five principles of soil health. The four principles of grazing management include balancing the forage supply and demand, uh, distributing grazing pressure evenly across the pasture, providing plants with adequate rest, and avoid gra grazing during sensitive times. Principles of, the principles of soil health include soil armor, minimizing soil disturbance, plant diversity, continuous living roots within the soil, and livestock integration. As you can see behind me, I have our grazing chart and a map of our pasture. We plan to start our grazing season on LCP 31 on April 1st on stockpiled forages. And we plan to end our grazing season on November 1st on dormant grasses. We plan to do one quick run through the pasture as this will help us <coughs> balance that forage supply and demand. And, we'll, and we will be rapidly going through the pasture while the grass is experiencing rapid growth. We plan to do a second run through the pasture that'll take longer on each paddock while it is under slower growth. We plan on this costing us $1.60 per head per day. We are also looking into the On-Farm Climate Action Fund by RDAR. We're hoping to use this funding to help us buy solar water and take soil samples. As you can see on the map behind me, there is no water source in LCP 29, and we need to bring water from LCP 34 over to that pasture so we can graze it. I am also this year's mixed farm coordinator. As of January this year, the college purchased eight new quarters of mixed farm land. Two of those quarters are designated for beef, while one of those two quarters is currently on lease to another farmer. The remaining six quarters are for the bison. We purchased all eight quarters from Lee Arthur. I am also this year's finance coordinator. I would like to make note that there have been some changes to the finance since the printing of the book. This year, our main source of income was our calf sales. This made up 68% of our total income. And our other cull cow sales, this included open cows, yearling bulls, and yearling heifers. Our biggest expense this year was our grazing budget. This is due to the increase of grazing days and the maintenance cost due for um, <laughs> bison grazing. Our second biggest cost was our total feed expense. This is due to the increase of cost of feed and having to custom feed for the greater part of the year. This year, we had a total income of $113,000 with a total expense of $172,000. This leaves us at a total net loss of $58,000. Next year, we expect to see an income of $124,000 with a total expense of $211,000. This will leave us at a net loss of $87,000 due to yardage cost of equipment rental, utilities, and labor. It costs us $2.08 to produce a pound of calf with an average return of $2.25. On average, it costs us $830 to manage a cow to produce a calf. The difference in the cost to produce a pound of calf between student managed farm and industry standards is the extra purchase of 10 replacement heifers for next year's SMF team. I am also this year's facility coordinator. With the purchase of the new land, it did come with a bison handling facility, but we are looking at upgrading the squeeze and have created a proposal to do so. We have compared three of the top brands of bison squeeze in industry, was Berlin, being Berlinic, as we like the shock absorber on the head gate, High Hog, as we like their customer service, and Moran, as we like the scale come attached with the squeeze. We are currently undecided on which squeeze we will purchase. I'm also this year's reproduction coordinator. This year we had a 13% open rate in our herd at preg checking. Uh, we believe this to be due in part due to the drought over the few years that could have impacted feed and nutrient quality. We kept back 35 2021 heifers. 25 of these were to replace the cull animals that we sold and the remaining 10 are going to help next year's unit establish the herd even further. The Bison Unit would like to extend a special thank you to Bar JL Enterprises, Pilatus Ranches, Liberty Run Ranches, and Irish Creek Bison for their generous donation of seven breeding bulls. 
These bulls have been indispensable in helping us set up our herd. Hello, I am also this year's research coordinator. And this year we had planned to do a bison mineral preference demonstration. But when the animals first arrived, they were not eating any mineral. Within the first while, we noticed that they were only eating salt. And on March 9th, we decided to mix the salt in with the mineral. And by March 14th, we seen that they, were, they started eating the mineral. Um, this did not give us enough time for us to do our mineral, prefer mineral preference demonstration, but it did teach us a lot about bison mineral intake while they are under stress. I'm also this year's marketing coordinator. This year, our sales consisted of our cow cows, our yearling bulls and heifers, and our bull calves and our heifer calves. This was done through a process of selling our calves or our cows to private buyers through a process that required at least three offers. A decision was then made based off of what fit the SMF's needs the best. We would like to extend a thank you to Nelson Brothers, Rangeland Bison, KNL Quarter Horses, and Pilatus Ranches for the purchase. I am also this year's public relations coordinator. In September of 2022, our unit created a Facebook page to publish our posts. Since then, we have gained 159 followers, we have 39 posts, and 736 total likes. Our most popular post is the post that we made when we went and prey checked our herd at Pilatus Ranches. This post received a total of 41 likes and was shared eight times. We believe that this is our most popular post as it was the first time our unit got to work with our herd at Pilatus Ranches. In October of 2022, our unit created an Instagram page. Since then, we have received 147 followers, we have 33 posts, and 1,230 total likes. Our most popular post on this platform is the post we made when we brought the first half of our herd home to college land. This post received a total of 60 likes. We believe that this is our most popular post as everyone was waiting very patiently for the bison herd to come home to college land. The bison unit would now like to extend a special thank you to Armin and Rita Mueller along with their family, Barjl Enterprises and Pilatus Ranches, our custom feeders, our SMF advisors, Gerald Hauer and Marisa Schubel, New Holland Agriculture, along with the rest of the Lakeland faculty and farm team. We would also like to extend a huge thank you to the other producers and businesses in the area that have supported us throughout the year. We now open the floor to any questions. In the middle here. The question was, is it possible to desensitize bison and escape the capture myopathy? I will hand this question over to Ben Schmalzbauer. So bison are not, haven't been domesticated nearly as long as any other species. And a lot of that domestication comes through just breeding and like selecting for those different traits for those uh, for like more domesticated animals, more friendly animals that are easier to handle. Um, it could be possible to breed that out of bison, but I don't think that is a goal of the industry as our main goal is species conservation. Does this answer your question? In the back. The question was that we had touched on the rations, but we were that he was wondering when we will be feeding rations three and four. This question will also go to our nutritionist, Ben. Hi, uh, so uh, rations three and four are gonna be, uh, ration three is actually being fed right now. There's actually a bit of an overlap between our grazing season and our winter feeding season as the animals are kept on pasture year round. So they're getting ration three right now, and we're gonna be feeding that until we run out of barley green feed. And I made ration four so that farm people would know what to do when they ran out of barley green feed. Does this answer your question? In the back there. So 
So the question was, have we identified what has to happen for our unit to become profitable? I will hand this question over to our finance coordinator, Ashley. Um, so in order for us to make a profit, we have to figure out how to first off decrease our feed costs, as well as um, focus more on uh, decreasing our grazing costs as well. Um, as we're a new unit, we're also kind of dealing with the baseline kind of finances to get ourselves set and ready to go. But I think in the next couple of years, we'll start to see less of a loss and possibly a profit. Answer your question. Right. Thank you. I would like to thank the Bison Unit. I'm Alicia Coltis, and I have the honor of being the general manager of the commercial SMF team for the upcoming 2023-24 academic school year. I would now like, now like to call upon the commercial team. Good afternoon, my name is Herbert Wagner, and I am the 2022-2023 General Manager of the Commercial Team, and this is my wonderful team behind me. My team consists of 17 members across the Prairie Provinces and stretching into Ontario. Our mission statement for this year is striving to raise quality beef through educational opportunities and hands-on experiences while creating relationships within industry. We made a SWAT this year for our SWAT, our strengths, is our team size, wide range of knowledge and experience, and networking with people of industry. For our weaknesses is our time restraint, as we're only here for eight months out of the year. Competition of resources and economics of scale within our herd. Opportunities for this year was, was working with other SMF units, uh, networking with people of industry, and our hands-on learning. For our threats, is our inflation of prices. This is our fuel and utilities prices, which will be talked about later. Uh, fat cattle prices, as the price of feeder calves went up this fall, the price of fats has not followed, and the feed shortage we are facing. My name is Brooke Vandeford, and I'm this year's team secretary. And these are the recommendations the last year's team left for us. Find pasture closer to the college, continue to bring calves home earlier in the fall, work with JGL on the sales of our steers, Weigh our heifers weekly, and if possible, attend the Canadian Western Exhibition of the Czar Show with Brad Heifers. And this is our progress report for so far this year. We were able to summer our cattle at Lee Park. We sold our steer calves directly to JGL in the fall. We attended the Canadian Western Exhibition with the Pen of Three Heifers. We sold a cold bull in the fall after retaining too many, female, too many of his females in our herd. And we, sold, and, oh, and we weighed our heifers every other week to ensure proper gains. My name is Austin Evermank, I'm this year's facilities coordinator. Our long-term goals this year were to aim for moderate frame replacements, increase weaning weights, make decisions in a timely manner, use, use break-even analysis to market, and reduce our length of calving season. Our short-term goals this year were to average a daily gain of one and a half pounds on our replacement heifers, decrease our death rate to below 3%, increase discussion in meetings, and increase our profitable expanding our calf crop. 
Good afternoon. My name is Rayleigh Lundquist, and I am one of the records coordinators this year on the team. We use the gold measures to assess the reproductive ability of our herd. This year, our growth rate was 51% of our dam's weight, which is 8% above the industry average and the highest in our herd in the last five years. We were very impressed by this, and we believe that it was due to a hard culling of our older cows in our herd in the fall. Our open rate when we price checked in November was 6%. This is 2% higher than the industry average, but because of some feed and nutrition issues last year around breeding season, we found this successful. Our length of calving season was 75 days, spanning from January 13th, 2023 to March 25th, 2023. And during that time, our death loss was 5.8%, which is slightly higher than we would have liked to see, but we are still accepting of it. Hello, my name is Nikisa Van Heck, and I'm also one of this year's record coordinators. Our current herd consists of 95 cows, 16 replacement heifers, 28 feeder heifers, and four bulls. This year, as we were scour guarding, we changed all of our herd's tags to all flex. This is because they are longer lasting due to being laser engraved on, which helps prevent fading from the sunlight. We would like to say a big thank you to Allflex for their kind donation of these tags to us. Before sending our pairs out onto pasture last year in May, we took weights off of a small group of heifers and a small group of steers. When they returned in September at weaning, we took weights off those same heifers and steers and calculated their average daily gain to look at how they did on pasture. We found in our steers an average of a 407 pound weight increase and a 368 pound increase in our heifers. The average daily gain in our steers was approximately, approximately 3.21 pounds per day, and in our heifers, approximately 2.85 pounds per day. We are going to recommend to next year's teams that they continue with this calculation on our calves as a whole so that they can ensure proper gains on pasture. This year's calf crop had the highest weaning weights and the second shortest weaning period when compared to our last five years. We achieved an average weaning weight of 668 pounds on our heifers and 719 pounds on our steers. We discovered that our heifer calves weaned off our first calf heifers were 88 pounds lighter than those weaned off our cows. However, our steer calves weaned off our first calf heifers were five pounds heavier than those weaned off our cows. This means that the range in weights from calves off our cows was lower. This is because our older cows produced lighter calves at weaning and were culled due to this poor performance. We realize that this is not a normal variance. We realize that this is not a normal variance, but our calves in the fall off our cows were lower, were, were lighter than those weaned off our first calf heifers. Hi, my name is Drake Granny. I'm this year's marketing coordinator. Uh, this year we sold 43 steer calves at a 700 pound average for 255 a pound and then seven at a 545 pounds uh, for 275 a pound to JGL. This is our five year steer average. Uh, if you see this year we were significantly higher in both price and weight, so we're really happy with that. Uh, this year our call sales went to NLS and Lloyd and NCL here in Vermilion. We sold 15 call cows and averaged 1650 a head and seven heifers at 2000 a head. These are this year's feeder heifers. We sold 20 of them for a 17.22 average ahead. Hello, my name is Koi Tatarn, and I'm the Range and Forage Coordinator. This year, the cows will be released onto Lee Park from May 28th to October 1st. The heifers will be released onto LC 15 and 16, after which they will join the cows. We are currently working with the owner of Lee Park to come up with an official grazing plan. As you can see behind me, we have the costs of last year and what we expect to pay in the coming year. My name is Reed Regarin. I'm one of this year's nutrition coordinators. On the board, you can see the total mix ration and all the feed stuffs that go into it. This is most current ration as there's no corn silage due to the feed shortage on campus. My name is Mara Reimer, one of this year's nutrition coordinators. We decided to keep our feeder heifers on a total mix ration because they did not weigh as much as we liked and because we wanted a little more growth as we sold them three weeks later. Hi, my name is Hayden Lelich. I'm one of this year's health and treatment coordinators. So this year our calves and replacement heifers got Bobby Gold One Shot, Ultraback 7, and Ivamec. Our bred, our bred heifers and mature cows got Scour Guard, 
uh, Cattle Master, Ultraback 7, and Ivamec, and our herd bulls got Ivamec. Uh, due to us vaccinating so close to the breeding season this year, we spoke closely with our vet and decided to switch to a killed vaccine, and we hope this has an impact on our open rate this coming breeding season. Hi, I'm Reese Harsney, and I'm also one of this year's health and treatment coordinators. The two main illnesses we treat for is pneumonia and scours. In order to decrease our illness rate, we have recommended that next year's team administers the PI3 intranasal vaccine to the calves in the first seven days after birth. This is in hope to increase our calves' immune system. When treating calves for pneumonia, we administer Restfor, which costs $1.73 per cc. And when treating calves for scours, we administer scour boluses for three days, which costs $5.88 per calf. Hi, my name is Julie Shand, and I am this year's reproduction coordinator. When looking for a bull, we had a budget of $8,500, and we were looking for a bull that fit the following criteria. A black Simmental with a birth weight of 90 to 100 pounds, a weaning weight of 680 to 700 pounds, a calving ease of 6.9%, and a milk EPD of 27%. We purchased lot 16, black gold 18K, from Leewood Ranches for $5,500. As you can see in the circled EPDs, he was a little under what we were looking for in calving ease, but excelled in all other categories. Our breeding season started on April 6th. This year, we had 52% of our calves, or our cows calf in the first interval, 37% in the second, and 11% in our third. We are very happy with this, as this is the best that our calving intervals have ever looked. We have continued our embryo contract with the purebred unit. They have chosen 10 of our cows to breed. For replacement heifer selection, we sorted by the cow's weaning weight. From here, we called the extremes in hopes to multi-trait select. We were looking for birth weight, weaning weight, calving ease, and the average daily gain, making this the top criteria for our herd. 119 was called due to being a hard pull, and 140 was called due to being a C-class heifer. I'm Zane King. I'm this year's research coordinator. Last year's team did the Who's Your Daddy trial, and we used that information to help us decide which bull we were going to call. And we can also use that information to see which bull's calves produce the best. <coughs> and we also feel there's a value in keeping track of genetics in our herd, so we're continuing genetic testing in our heifer calves. We also did the neonatal trial, where we drew blood from the cows and calves, after birth, and all the cows were deficient in vitamin A, and majority of them were deficient in vitamin E, and all the calves were deficient in vitamin A and selenium, and majority of them were deficient in vitamin E and iron, and we give them a supplement to try and improve that. My name is Ava Lacusta. I am this year's Roundup Coordinator. The team decided to travel to Regina, Saskatchewan this year to attend the Canadian Western Agribition, where we were lucky enough to have Brad and Tammy Christensen of Van Lar Heritage Farms purchase our heifers for 2060. We were very, very pleased with this price. This year, the commercial team also decided to be a part of the Roundup sale, where we sold two pens of five commercial replacement heifers to Mike Rees of Horseshoe Ranching in Castor, Alberta, for an average of $2,300. If you look at the graph behind me, you'll see a five-year average of our Roundup heifers. From 2019 to 2022, we did not average anything over $2,000, so $2,300 we are very, very pleased with. I'm Nick Lamont. I'm this year's Mixed Farms Coordinator. This semester, the Mixed Farm team was tasked with updating the environmental farm plan on the farm. We found the obligations here for the legal obligations we had for uh, the dairy unit, as well as the regulations we have for VBB+. Uh, there's also possible grants we have available, as well as a good way to show the general public the way we are taking care of our environment. I'm also this year's risk management coordinator. Throughout this second semester, we are faced with a few risks that needed managing. One of them was increasing herd health during calving. To try and increase herd health during calving, we implemented daily morning and night checks to not only increase the, the health of our cows, but also try and increase the herd health of our calves. Secondly, we were faced with the risk of a corn silage shortage on campus. For this, we changed the ration of our heifers to paled barley and free choice hay. Finally, 
we are faced with a large risk of finding pasture for the 2023 spring season. In the past, we had gone to Marathorpe, but we are lucky enough to be able to go back to Lee Park this summer because of its because of it being so close to the campus, we're able to have a more hands-on experience for the students. Hi, my name is Caitlin Carrier, and I'm this year's Public Relations Coordinator. Our Facebook page has 1,088 followers and 975 likes. We have gained 46 new followers and 15 new page likes since September 1st. Our most reached post was the team's field trip, which reached 3,521 people. We also started a new Instagram page this year and have gained 149 followers. Our most liked post was the team's roundup sale post, which had 63 likes. Please follow both of our pages from the links on the slides. Hi, my name is Grace Christensen and I'm this year's finance coordinator. Our largest revenue source year to date has come from our steer sales in September, having more cows to cull due to temperament and lack of reproductive efficiency, and getting more for our three more than more than expected for our three heifer calves sold at Agribition and our ten heifer calves that we sold at the Roundup sale. Our our we also received more for our cull bull sold in November, where we, we got twenty eight hundred dollars for him, which we were which we were really happy with. We were also able to sell four of our twin calves, which brought in, brought in an additional income of just over $1,500. When looking at our expenses, our largest expense year to date has been our feed and bedding expense, where we went over budget by about $26,000. This is due to the increase in cost for hay and having to feed more hay due to the lack of corn silage on campus. Our roundup and sale expenses came in under budget at $1,259, and so did the purchase of our new herd bull, where we only spent $5,500 of our $8,500 budget. The slide behind me compares the cost of production of last year's team to our cost of production this year. There was a 44 cent increase, which we believe is due to the higher winter feed cost, as well as inflation in fuel and utilities compared to previous years. The chart behind me compares the money coming in and out of our account as of April 1st. Our total revenue is $215,038, while our total expenses are $198,150. This leaves us with a net profit of $16,888. We have currently only sold 20 of our feeder calves with the remaining 28 on campus still. This is because they are still being used for final exams. We believe that once we sell these calves in May, we will receive an initial income of just under $50,000, bringing up our total in income and therefore our total net profit. The final slide behind me compares the budget, uh, the budget this year to the budget, the budget next, the, uh, the budget we made for next year. The, we protected their net income, their net income, their total income, and their expenses. We believe that their net income, their net profit for the 2024 year will be about $13,500. Please refer to page 49 in the booklet to see a breakdown of this year's budget compared to next year's budget. Our recommendations for next year's team is to use herd tracks for health records, uh, use break evens for decision making, continue Facebook discussion posts, use internasal vaccines at processing, mandatory, uh, maintain industry relationships, and vlog th events throughout the year also use a spreadsheet for replacement heifer selection. We would like to thank New Holland Agriculture, Dean of Agriculture, Tracy Clinton, Kyle Hafner, and the rest of the farm staff for everything they've done this year. I'll now open the floor to questions. The question was, what were contributing factors to the significant increase in the weaning weight this year? For this, I'd like to give it to Drake Rennie, our marketing coordinator. Uh, I think that maybe the quality of the grass this year was better than last year, and I think they grazed a little bit longer this year as well, which also helped. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, so the question was, can we elaborate more on our morbid morbidity to mortality rate uh, for this? I'd like to pass to Ray. 
Um, so our death loss, mostly our mortality rate, mostly in our herd. Um, we had a few extreme cases of pneumonia that most of our calves died from. There was a few navel infections that had spread to the joints. And our morbidity rate, I think our highest treatment was for navel infections again that um, got better. And then we had also a high number of scour treatments. Does that answer your question? I am not sure about that number, but I can get back to you with that. Any other questions? Thank you. I would like to thank the commercial unit for their presentation, and I will now call on the dairy unit. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2022-2023 Dairy Unit Final Presentation. My name is Scott Stanieven from St. Mary's, Ontario, and I have the pleasure of being this year's Dairy Unit General Manager. Behind me on the screen is my wonderful team of 24 members, ranging from Prince Edward Island to British Columbia, with a few members of our team coming from India as well. Our mission statement this year is as follows. We strive to produce quality milk and raise healthy animals, focusing on production and efficiency while gaining skills and knowledge to be used in the dairy industry. Some goals that we have accomplished so far this year include milk quality improvement, improving on body condition score on our cows coming in from the dry lot, as well as community involvement initiatives. Some goals that we continue to work on and leave for next year's team include dry cow care, increasing heat detection and conception rate in our cows, the neonatal study results, as well as transition cow health, focusing on retained placentas, metritis, and ketosis. Our, our SWOT analysis is as follows. For strengths, we have a strong diversified team, good heat detection and conception rate in our heifers, as well as milk quality and lots of technology for new learning opportunities tend to be strengths for our team. For weaknesses, we have poor heat detection and conception rates in our cows. We have transition cow health issues, as well as we find communication and location to be weaknesses for our unit. For opportunities with the new dry cow facility, we have new pasture access, the WestGen Endowment Fund, herd genetic diversity and improvement, as well as feed quality improvement potential with new corn silage varieties. For threats this year, we face biosecurity, activism, inflation, as well as silage inventory management. Some recommendations for next year's team that we leave include including or er, continuing on doing the corn silage variety trials to help improve on feed quality, as well as diversify herd genetics, whether that be through the purchase of new semen, embryos, or the potential purchase of livestock. And lastly, to create a non-lactating animal inventory plan to help better our stocking densities in our heifer as well as dry cow facilities. 
afternoon. My name is Kuhn Behrens from Leduc County, Alberta. I'm one of this year's finance coordinators. So up on the screen here, we've got a comparison between our budgeted versus our actual income. So on the left-hand side, we've got our milk sales coming in at just over $1.4 million. And I'd like to note that the budget allocated to the Dairy Direct Payment Program, we have now received that for about $31,500. So breaking down the incomes a little further, uh, our second largest income source comes from our cull cow sales. That's just due to the genetic changes we're making within the herd, and we're calling a large number of animals. Good afternoon. My name is Colin Baum. I'm from Vancouver Island, and I'm one of this year's finance coordinators speaking on expenses. As you can see, feed and nutrition is our main expense coming in at $764,000, where we were budgeted $751,000. Second is labor, coming in at $150,000. And third and fourth is maintenance and repairs and milk deductions. Our team made a net profit of $59,500 this year. Here is a further breakdown of the budget. 54% went to feed and nutrition, and the 11% went to labor, and 8% went to milk deductions, and 8% went to maintenance and repairs. So our budget for next year, we have increased the budget of milk sales up to $1.4 million. Uh, this is due to the increased price of milk over the past couple of months, as well as maintaining that kind of elevated budget for those cull cow sales as those genetic changes will continue into next year. We increased the total health budget as we are now doing a selective or a blanket dry cow therapy rather than selective dry cow therapy. We are also increased the transition as we are now treating for more transition issues. We increased the bedding as we are now bedding more frequently, frequently our dry cow facility and the shavings have gone up. Maintenance and repairs have gone up as we are anticipating maintenance on the vector. Milk deductions have gone up as we are shipping more milk. We have also introduced livestock purchases and equipment rental into the budget for a net profit of the 2023-2024 team of $9,910. Good afternoon. My name is Tara Croker and I'm from Mitchell, Manitoba. I am this year's public relations coordinator. This year was the first year of our Instagram page, where I had a goal of 200 followers. We currently have 209 followers, where 52% are 18 to 24 years old. Our most popular post was when egg business students came for a tour of the dairy. On Facebook, we currently have 1,168 followers, where 32% are 25 to 34 years old. Through our Instagram page, we are able to reach a younger demographic. On Facebook, our most popular post was thanking Agadari Mart for the continued support of our unit. If you haven't already, please like and follow our Instagram and Facebook pages. Hi, my name is Hunter Tatarin. I am from Ituna, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's Mixed Farm Coordinator. In the dairy unit, I get to manage the manure with my Mixed Farm team and my Crops SMF team they get to help me discuss on where the manure goes based on soil samples and crop rotation. At the dairy barn, the lagoon gets pumped out at least twice a year. In the fall of 2022, we spread, the, we spread manure on LCP 15, LCP 16, LC 17, LC 18, and LCP 21. Between 2,600 and 4,500 gallons per acre were spread on these fields. There was still more that needed to be hauled out, so the rest went on to the neighbor's field. Our plan for April of 2023 is to spread it, spread it on all pasture lands, LCP, LCP 21, 22, and 23. If you would like to see more of the soil samples of 2022, please refer to page 60 in the booklet. The reason why we are, the reason why we are putting it on pasture lands and not on crops field, due to the fact that crops team has explained to us and identified a higher desire in phosphorus levels in the fields. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Alpan Redu. I'm from India, and this year I'm calf feed coordinator. This year we increased our milk feeding program from 60 days to 72 days, in which we increased the amount of milk replacer from milk replacer to 634.80 liters. And and 95.22 kilogram of dry matter. These numbers are from birth to weaning. The cost per head per day for pre weaned calves is $7.11. Due to our space constraints, we have to cut back the original 60 day plan. Thank you, guys.
Good afternoon. My name is Andrew Mason. I'm this year's close-up fresh and lactating cow feed coordinator. On the board, you can see we had a few health issues this year, one of them being retained placentas. Out of the 170 cows we had calved, we had 31 cases, 18.24% 18 of our herd. The industry average from research we did was between 5 and 15%. Our corrective action plan this year is to reduce the stocking density in our dry cow facility and change our close-up and far-off ration to be similar to reduce stress from transitioning them. On the board, you can see the cost of feed per day for our lactating cows versus the profit from our milk per day. As you can see, we spend $2,309.57 and we make $4,031.23 for a total profit of $1,721. Thanks. Good afternoon, my name is Jessie Bloom. I'm from Bonneville, Alberta, and I'm this year's far off dry cow and heifer feed management coordinator. Since our new dry cow facility couldn't accommodate for two separate groups, our dry cows and pregnant heifers were switched to the same ration. Recently, we've had to undergo a new ration change due to a suspected mineral deficiency, as well as a corn silage shortage. To combat these issue, issues, we've increased mineral concentrations in the ration, as well as added a trace mineral block to our dry cows and pregnant heifers. Please note mineral concentrations listed on the table are mineral concentrations for the ration. The new ration consists of 26 pounds of barley silage, 12 pounds of heifer hay, 8 pounds of corn silage, 4.5 pounds of canola meal, 2 pounds of close-up dry cow supplement, 0 0.3307 pounds of NSI fortifier, and 0 0.1764 pounds of limestone 40%. The new ration cost per head per day is $6.02. For more information, please refer to pages 60 and 61 in the booklet. I'm also this year's range and forage coordinator. Due to our limited pasture space, we've come up with a modified rotational grazing system. The five acres will be divided into four long paddocks separated with electric fencing. The dry cows and pregnant heifers will be allowed daily access to the pasture with rotations every one to two weeks to maintain soil health. The grass mix chosen to be seeded was a barren brew grass mix based on the recommendations of our agronomist. The mix contains armory tall fescue, arsenal meadow brome, artillery smooth brome, intermediate wheatgrass, and hikari alaska brome. This mix forms a strong sod, is hardy, and reduces the chance of bloat. The budget set for the 2023-2024 Range and Forage Coordinator is $3,160. This is increased from last year due to increased grazing costs as well as seed costs. For more information, please refer to page 61 of the booklet. I'm Kuhn Behrens, and I'll also be filling in for our Technology Coordinator as she's unable to be here today. So comparing back to mid-years, the VMS cows have had an average daily production decrease of two liters, as well as a decrease of milking frequency. This was due to the increased numbers of animals on the VMS. And so to combat this, we've just reduced the number down to 53. Through past experiences and trials, we found that the ideal number is around 48. It allows ample idle time for those shy and timid cows to be enticed to the VMS. Hello, my name is Bree Corley. I'm from Kamloops, BC, and I'm this year's other technology coordinator responsible for feed, ventilation, and manure systems. As many of you may know, we use a Lely vector to feed, and for those of you unfamiliar with it, it's an automatic feeding system. Throughout the year, we've been monitoring its accuracy. We are currently sitting at about 96% accuracy, with our yearly average being about 97%. On the graph shown behind me, days in March are presented on the x-axis, and percentage of accuracy is represented on the y-axis. As you can see, our accuracy fluctuates on the daily. By monitoring these fluctuations, we are able to identify and solve problems within our feed kitchen. Moving to the other end of things, on January 24th, we installed a new manure pump. This manure pump's 20 horsepower motor eliminates the use of fire hoses to break up bedding and manure buildups during the flush process before manure is pumped out to the lagoon. This saves in water, making this a great investment for our barn. Hi, I'm Keith Wurstel. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm this year's data analysis coordinator. I continued looking into first lactation profitability using a standardized milk price to compare the last five years. I found this year's group to be our most profitable, earning an average of $25.50 a day, with our top cow earning just shy of $30 a day by producing 406 kgs of butter fat in 237 days of milk. Compared to Western Canada averages of a cow producing 426 kgs of butter fat in a 305 day lactation, she is doing fantastic. I then took this year's group and broke them down by age at first calving. 
for a herd average of 24 months at first calving, which is also our most profitable group, earning just around $30 a day, compared to our worst group of 25 months at first calving, which earns just around $28 a day. I also looked into our herd's lactation peaks. Our first lactation is peaking at 40 liters at 68 days of milk. Our second lactation is peaking at 50 liters at 55 days of milk. And our three plus lactation is peaking at 59 liters at, 50, at 44 days of milk for a herd average of 50 liters at 55 days of milk. Compared to Western Canada averages of 42 liters at 55 days of milk, we are ahead of industry standards. Good afternoon, my name is Fatima Akhtar. I'm from Abbotsford, BC, and I'm the records coordinator this year. We successfully completed our proaction validation on February 16th. We submitted SOPs to Animal Care to get approved, and the new code of practice was released on March 30th in Canada. And since the changes won't be coming into effect till April 2024, the next year's dairy SMS students will need to update the SOPs for it. This year, I wanted to make entering records more efficient, so I made seven improvements to Dairy Comp. I made one click passageway so you don't have to enter lots of commands and you can just click tabs to pull something up. I One thing I implemented this year is I asked everyone to um, sign off and record in the day planner when they're taking red bands off a treated cow after the withdrawal period is up. This prevents treated milk from getting into the bulk tank which saves us a lot of money and avoids miscommunication altogether. Hello, my name is Lucas Eiserman and I'm from Lacombe, Alberta, and this year I'm one of the transition cow coordinators. So this year we've had a total of 170 cows and heifers calf from April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. So up on the board I'll be comparing our post-calving issues to industry standard. So for cases of ketosis we were 31% over industry standard. For milk fever, we are right on the average, which is 5%. For metritis, the average is 6%, and we are currently at 15 And last but not least, for retained placenta, the average is 10%, and we are currently at 18%. Good afternoon. I am Madison Perch from Prince Edward Island, and I am one of this year's transition cow coordinators. This year, we have experienced an increased number of post-calving diseases within our herd. On the graph on the screen shows our post-calving diseases over the last three years. Three years ago, we treated 25% of our herd out of 142 cows and heifers that calved for a post-calving disease. Two years ago, we treated 44% of the herd out of 143 cows and heifers that calved for a post-calving disease. And this year we treated 75% of the herd out of 170 cows and heifers that calved for a post-calving disease. Possible causes are due to diet, poor quality feed, stocking density inside the dairy barn as well as outside in the dry lot facility, and stress and movement of animals between pens so close to calving date. On the, gra on the graphs on the screen, you can see that we would we've been recording body condition scores. The graph on your left shows body condition scores from September 2nd, 2022 to October 31st, 2022, out of a total of 23 cows and heifers that calved. Our, our, our goal was to reduce our post or our, sorry, our body condition scores that were above 3.75 at calving in our first lactation and heifers. As you can see on the graph on your right, shows our body condition scores from November 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023, out of a total of 73 cows and heifers that calved. We were able to reduce our first lactation body condition scores, but unfortunately not our heifers. Hello, my name is Lise Husing. I'm from Island, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's herd health coordinators. From November to March 31st, we traded eight cases of pneumonia, two cases of pink eye, and six miscellaneous cases. When comparing to mid-years, we have treated 86% less pink eye, 33% less pneumonia, and 50% less miscellaneous cases. Hello, my name is Kyle Van Dyke. I'm from Westlock, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's herd health coordinators. This year, we worked with our vet, Dr. Dana Summers from Leduc Farm Animal Hospital, and we updated our vaccination protocol. Currently, our heifers at birth are receiving TriShield and Nasal Gen. At weaning age, they are receiving Vista Once and Covex in 10. 
with a booster given three to four weeks later. At pre-breeding age, they receive another round of Vista once in Covex and 10. Two months to calving, they're receiving JVAC, and then three to four weeks before calving, they're receiving JVAC and Epernex. Onto the cows, the cows that dry off are receiving Triangle 5, JVAC, and 1's PMH, and three to four weeks before calving, the cows are receiving JVAC, Covex and 10, and Epernex. Hello, my name is Manpreet. I'm from India, and I'm this year Calf Health Coordinator. So this semester, we have suffered a lot from pneumonia. 35% of calves having pneumonia in October, which is actually a great number. So we order to decrease that number. We treat and medicate the calves and fully stick with the biosecurity, which helps to reduce the number from 35% to 11% in November. Now we are currently at 12% in March. The graph on the right shows the average daily gain of the calves. The average daily gain shows the overall health of the calves. And the industry benchmark for this is 0.68 kg per day. Hello, my name is Sam Cuff. I'm from Innisfil, Alberta, and I'm this year's Utter Health Coordinator. Looking back at September 22, our somatic cell count at the beginning of the year was 142,000. Looking at March 9th's DHI test, the somatic cell count is now at 71,000. This reduced in somatic cell count can be due to blanket dry cow therapy, cleaning the stalls three times a day, and the post staff or, or the post dipper cup in the parlor side for staff or as identified cows. Hi, my name is Omkar Singh. I am from India, and I am a production coordinator this year. So in past 12 months, our production and milk quality is increased. As per Alberta Milk's new regulations uh, applied this year, we did not get penalized for any infractions in somatic cell count, individual bacteria count, and freezing point. And our herd somatic cell count is also decreased in past months, and it cost us $13 to produce one kg of butter fat. Thank you. My name is Renier Vandersteed, I'm from Waterford, Ontario. I'm this year's hoof health coordinator. My job is to keep the cows walking comfy around the barn. Some tools I had this year is a belt sander to keep our hoof knives sharp. And on the screen, you can see we dropped our digital dermatitis average to 30%, where the Alberta average is 44%. Uh, some tools I have this year is the MS Shippers Auto Booth Clean System. This is an automated pump and a mat that the cows get to walk through after the robot, and it keeps the digital dermatitis very low. Hello, my name is Simone Heisman. I'm from Lethbridge, Alberta, and I'm this year's research coordinator. Currently, we are doing the oral neonatal supplement study along with the beef units. In contrast to last semester, we changed our second collection from day 14 to day 3, as researchers found there would be an earlier spike within the baseline vitamins. Just recently, we got results from last year's collections and found several things. With the cows, all of them are deficient in vitamin A and majority in vitamin E. All of the day zero calves were deficient in vitamin A and selenium, and majority were deficient in vitamin E and iron. After the second collection, even with the supplementation, all of the calves were still deficient in vitamin A and selenium, as well as majority were deficient in vitamin E and iron. The researchers are also looking into an oral juvenile supplement, as well as an adult oral supplement. In the DLC, there are one cup cameras around the barn that one cup is using to collect data on heat detection and calvings. This semester, we implemented a camera facing the parlor side for increased data on heat detections. Good afternoon. My name is Philip Reuter, and I'm, one of, I'm from Grunthal, Manitoba, and I'm one of this year's reproduction coordinators. This year, the team purchased five cows from Glenda Mooch of Deer Haven, Thorsby, Alberta. The reason why we purchased these five cows was the increased genetic potential and the genetic diversity in our herd. Looking into the five cows that we bought, the first cow that we bought was Deerhaven Vanilla Victor. Vanilla is a good plus 83, and at the last test day, she was 371 days in milk, producing 28 kilos at a 5.2 butter fat. Vanilla is also due to calve June 2nd. The second cow that we bought was Deerhaven Final Velvet. Velvet is a good plus 82, and at the last test day, she was, she was at 125 days in milk, producing 28 kilos at a 4.9 butter fat. We also purchased Deerhaven Pepsi Brewmaster. Pepsi is a very good 88, and at her last test day, she was producing 46 kilos at a 4.4 butterfat. Another cow that we purchased is Deerhaven Catnip Viper. Catnip is a very good 88, and at her last test day, she was producing 34 kilos at a 3.9 butterfat. And lastly, we purchased Deerhaven Maze McCutcheon. Maze is an excellent 90, and at her last test day, she was producing 44 kilos at a 3.5 butter fat. Maze also has a 60,000 kilo lifetime production award.
Hi, my name's Naomi Haig and I'm from Waltheim, Saskatchewan and I am this year's second reproduction coordinator. This year we had the chance to apply for the West Gen Endowment Fund and add 85 callers to our parlor side. With these callers, they came with rumination and heat detection in them. The rumination will help us better learn about the cows and catch issues before they become a bigger issue. On the heat detection side of the callers, they, we are looking into raising our conception issues. Our conception issues, our conception rates, sorry, are currently sitting at 43% in the cows and 55% in the heifers. Some conception issues we have range from irregular rations given, lack of minerals, breeding too late and missing the heat, or breeding too early when nothing is ready to be fertilized. Hi, I'm Emily Ward. I'm from Sparta, Ontario, and I'm the genetics coordinator. Over the year, we've changed our breeding program for our cows. At the beginning of the year, we bred 90% conventional semen and 10% beef. Now we breed our top 20% to 20% of cows to sex semen, 60% to conventional, and our bottom 20% of cows to beef. Our heifer program has stayed the same at 40% sex and 60% conventional. This ensures our replacement numbers of five heifers per month. With our top cows and heifers being bred to sex semen, it helps continue to improve our herd's confirmation and production. Based off of our herd files for genetic testing for the heifers, it shows that they are over industry average for production and confirmation. We would like to thank the audience for their time and attention for our presentations this afternoon. We would also like to give a special thank you to Amber Sayers and Yolette Van Eekirk, our advisors, for everything that they do for our student managed farm team this year. We would also like to give a big thank you to everybody on as well as off campus that helped make the dairy units here possible. Lastly, we would like to thank New Holland Agriculture for their sponsorship and everything that they also do for the student managed farm here at Lakeland College. We would now like to open the floor to the audience for any questions that they may have. So the question was, what do you think contributed to your large numbers of pneumonia cases in your calves? And what do we do to plan to get those cases down? I will pass this question along to our calf health coordinator, Manpreet. So in order to treat the calves, we can usually give new floor or rest floor. Or if there is any severe kind of case, we're going to call our wet dinner. Is this answer your question? So this is a management kind of factor. We can fully stick with the biosecurity, like we can use the boot tips, which is one of the most beneficial factors, because with the boots or with the like environment, environment we can mainly spread the disease, so we can use this one. Is this answer your question? So the question was, the progressive penalty program was just implemented in Alberta, and what impact will that have on the Dairy Learning Center? Uh, I will answer this question. Um, due to the improvements in our milk quality, as long as we can continue that, uh, we do not see the progressive penalty program having any impact at the Dairy Learning Center within the next 12 months. Does that answer your question? Oh, sorry, up there at the top. So the question was, uh, we have some issues with our pregnancy rates, and how are we going to change to get those pregnancy rates up? Uh, to answer this question, I will ask on our reproduction coordinator, Naomi Haig. To raise our pregnancy rates, we are looking into regulating the rations due to us running out of corn silage that kind of caused some problems. Um, we have started to also give minerals. They seem to have lacked that and we're eating dirt. So we added minerals to the group 
and we are hoping to that all of this will lead to the helping them. Does this answer your question? Thank you. Thank you, Dara Unit, for your presentation. I would just like to say a few more special thank yous. So thank you to all the farm staff this year, Chris Lehman, Amber Sayer, Sharon Ryder, Joanne Dixon, Kyle Hafner, April Warlow, Tiffany Belbeck, Madison Smith, Bailey Hulse, and Justin Kane, as well as the marketing department of Lakeland College, who have provided guidance and assistance to market all of the units, and to the staff of the information technology department, including Liam Lawrence to ensure that the audio, audio visual equipment is working to and facilitate the online broadcast. And thank you to Denise Martin and Trisha Mechter, Mecker to uh, for their help in so very many ways. The administration of the Egg Science Interim Dean, uh, Tracy Quinton and Darlis, uh, Chairs Darlis Stepanik and Brianne Bellwood. I would like to now call on Tracy Quinton, Interim Dean of Agriculture Sciences, for a few remarks. Thank you. I just want to take a couple of minutes and, uh, again, uh, uh, congratulate the students on an excellent job. Every year, it's, it's a really good job that they do and, and uh, an educational afternoon. So uh, a, hand, a round of applause for the students again for an excellent job that they've done. I'd be remiss if I'd, I didn't uh, acknowledge the, the faculty that uh, put a lot of time and energy in for these students. Uh, having been in, that, in their shoes and, and the work that goes in, uh, I want to acknowledge and appreciate the, the time and effort that our, our faculty commit to, to the SMF and the SMF model, the additional hours of, of workload that they, they really aren't paid for, and, uh, but we appreciate that. And, and so I would uh, also like a, a round of applause for our faculty members that contribute to this. And just an acknowledgement to our, our uh, senior leadership, the support that they give to the Student Managed Farm. It's, it's not a perfect model by any means, as, as we can see, there's always challenges. And, and when you have uh, 100 plus students running your farming operation, there's gonna be some challenges and some hiccups along the way. So I appreciate the support that our senior leadership gives towards uh, promoting this model and, and supporting this model so that our students can actually engage in that learning activity. So again, thank you very much for, for that and, and enjoy your evening. I hope you uh, appreciate, it's not every day, I guess everybody has a final exam in front of a couple of hundred people. So I'm sure the students are quite relieved. And so enjoy your weekend and uh, there, there are final exams coming up on Monday. So I, I hope you take some time and study as well. So congratulations again.